students in power chairs roll into a classroom. Outside, with other students, they travel the campus. One student carries a do-it tote bag. Words appear. Pursuit of a more equitable world, disability culture, and society. Students in a large lecture hall. Students sign. Seated, a man with two prosthetic hooks greets and hugs a student. An excerpt from John Kemp's keynote address at the University of Washington. Thanks to all of you for coming. Good afternoon. I'm Cheryl Bergstaller, the founder and director of the Do It Center, where Do It stands for Disabilities, Opportunities, Internetworking, and Technology. In Do It, uh, we work to increase the academic and career success of individuals with disabilities and make physical spaces, student services, teaching and learning activities, and technology more welcoming and accessible to people with disabilities. I have the pleasure of introducing our keynote speaker, and his name is John Kemp. I met him around the time when I founded the Do It Center, which is like more than 25 years ago, and we've sort of been traveling in similar circles, so it's really, really especially nice for me to have you here, John. So I've always been impressed with his personal insights about the history of disability rights, parallels between this movement and others that improve our world by more fully engaging people um, from all different um, groups. Uh, benefiting from their diverse talents and um, perspectives. He's been an ally of Do It and other organizations that serve to create a more inclusive world, and he's even mentor mentored a few of the uh, Do It scholars. He is a renowned disability rights leader who co-founded the American Association of People with Disabilities as a, and is now the president and chief executive of a network of nonprofit organizations that provide services that educate, employ, and empowered children and adults with disabilities. His talk today is titled, Then and Now, People with Disabilities and Our Pursuit of a More Equitable World. So will you please join me in welcoming John Kemp to the podium. The speaker's remarks are captioned on a large screen. A sign interpreter stands to the left of the podium. John walks haltingly to Cheryl. They shake hands. All right. Good afternoon. All good? John Kemp, Viscardi Center. Do you know the four promises in the ADA? Have you memorized those? Equality of opportunity, independent living, economic self-sufficiency, full participation. Okay? Equality of opportunity, independent living, economic self-sufficiency, full participation. Everything that's written in the ADA is intended to support those four promises. They are the cornerstone of the ADA. We have more empowered people today in the United States and around the world than ever. I like talking about culture. I like talking about who we are as a culture of people with disabilities. Because I think it's do we like ourselves enough to think that we are worthy of belonging and righteously belonging in this world? Do we apologize first, I'm sorry, but I have a disability and I can't quite get into this building? Don't say that. Don't think that. Don't ever think that. Disability culture is not simply the shared experience of oppression. All right? This is not about, oh, woe's me, I'm so oppressed. This is about why have we not been able to convince others that what we are needing and wanting to do is so important. Why buildings have to be this accessible and have services like interpreter services and the ability to have voice recognition and other things like this. The elements of our culture include our emerging art and humor. Have you seen good disability art? Have you embraced it? A lot of artists with disabilities can do anything they want in art, but some of them choose to tell our story through their art, their writing, their, their drawings, their plays, and it's powerful. It's first person 
discussion about what our life is all about. The most compelling evidence of a disability culture is the vitality and universality of these elements despite generations of crushing poverty. Oh, believe me, you can't get Social Security benefits and Medicaid unless you spend down any assets until you're poor enough to qualify and then you have to stay poor to be able to continue to receive these benefits. You can't get wealthy. So we have these terrible public policy issues that still remain on the books after many of us have fought for 40 years to try and change them. Social isolation, a lack of education, silencing, and even imposed immobility. So what are the core values of a disability culture? A heightened acceptance of human differences. There are only a couple here. A heightened acceptance of human differences, whether they be racial, economic, class. But here's my point. If I am always pointed out to be different, whether it be that person on the plane sitting next to me, right? What happened to you? If I'm always pointed out as different, how do I look at other people, not just other people with disabilities, but people who are different from me in their age, their gender, their race, how do I look at them? I better be very tolerant and very accepting if I want them to accept me as a peer and an equal. That's all I want. I, I, don't, I don't want secondary gain. I don't want to get something that I didn't deserve. I want to just be equal. That's what we all should want. We have this sophisticated future orientation now. So when I came here, I said, I know this place is accessible. It's a university. It's, it's Cheryl. It's everybody. The technology, the physical plants, it's everything. I'm not worried about, is this a place accessible? Ramps coming up the front of the building into here onto the stage, just my expectation is accessible. No more phone calls in advance. Now the next generation of this is, it's accessible, but are we included? And are people talking to us? Oh, we're in the room, but does anybody, does everybody, everybody walk right past us? Talk over us? Don't you love that one? I, I love that one. I'm sitting in my scooter and two people are talking over my head, like I'm a lamp or something. I'm like, hello, 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 really. How do you respond when somebody says uh, nothing to you, or ignores you, or disses you, right to your face? And believe me, I've had people talk trash to me, to my face, just because I have a disability, and I'm, dumbfounded that I haven't figured out how to overcome that and my anger just rises up. But I don't let it take me over. I'm offended, but I don't respond in a violent way, ever. But these are our challenges. How do we respond to these things that happen in our life? I don't want to go around all day being unhappy. I do not. I don't want to go around all day being mad. My job is to win over every person without sacrificing my dignity. I will not do that. And in fact, when I'm sitting on planes and people sitting next to me always have three questions, and I'm sure those of you who fly understand this very well, those of you with disabilities, where are you going? Where are you from? What happened to you? All right, those, that's those, those are the three questions. And then they come up after I give them my simple answer and they say, you know, they make hands now, don't you? And I go, really, really? Of course I do. <laughs> and I, I usually want to say, what happened to you? But I don't say that to them. You know? Of course I know that. But I can function very, very well. There are many things I can do, and I accept the things that I can't. And I'm not sure what the gain is. And all I need is for my artificial hand with articulating fingers not to move when I'm on, you know, 3,000 miles away from the person that's going to fix them, and then I'm in big trouble. 
just like everybody has, uses chairs, power chairs in the race. We, we always worry about like what, what happens if. Any questions? Since you were growing up uh, in the 60s all the way until now, would you say that the treatment of disabled people has changed from like more of like an like 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 oh you're a freak to more of like a passive aggression or you know like that? Like, do people treat you different mm -hmm. uh, from the past to now? Mm -hmm. And is it better? They treat me differently, and it's uh, they treat me they treat me better. I will say they, they treat me better. And the power of media, good and bad, has definitely lifted us up. And I think more and more of us are seen as regular and appropriately belonging to society. But there are still some bigots out there who can never accept anybody that has a disability, will not accept people with limitations, even though probably we're all going to age into disability if we live long enough. So um, they don't get that part of it. But for the most part, life has gotten better. I think, I think our movement's gotten too timid. I think we really are playing too safe. And part of this game is that we sort of fear, like if we yell too much at daddy or mommy, they're going to take away our money and our, our rights. And it's like, no, no, no. We have to be stronger, louder, in their face a lot more. But we have to also win over the hearts and minds of everyday people about why inclusion has to be our standard. And I don't think we've come up with an appropriate public education campaign and the like. The other thing I, I really think works is presence. The more of us who are on college campuses, the more of us who are in the workplace, the more, more of us who are in our communities, the more public will see that we are just like everyone else and that we are part of the fabric. So presence is a big part of it and being out there and being a part of everything that's going on is really important. And you speaking up is very important. So we've got a, we've got a long way to go, but we've got to speak up. We, got to, we cannot be timid. And I think the older I get, the more frustrated I am as to how timid this, this movement has gotten. We had some kick butt people at the beginning of our movement in the 60s that would just chain themselves to buses and climb up on their knees the Supreme Court steps and we don't see any of this stuff going on these days at all and I'm wondering what's going on have we have they thrown us some crumbs and we've accepted them and that's good enough for us it's not good enough for us it'll never be good enough for us it's not equal Hi. So um, my question is, um, if you could tell your younger self when you were in college or at any age, um, either if it's something about mental health you wish you would have knew or something about interacting with other people with disabilities or looking at yourself with a disability, what would you say to your younger self? Wow. That's a great question. And by the way, thank you for the directions on getting to this room. I appreciate it. She, she helped me get here earlier today. Um, I would probably say, open up your mind. Have a bigger aperture, a bigger vision of who is a rightful member of society and that we're all equal. And I would probably have to sit myself down and have a firm conversation with myself. Because when you're young and think you're cool and all that other stuff and you get a little cocky and, you know, full of yourself, it's like, it's the worst. It's absolutely the worst thing to do. We're all equal. And that's what I would have, a, I would have a hard talk with myself about that. If I want to be regarded as equal, then I have to regard everyone else as equal. And that's the way I feel about everyone, regardless of where they came from, how they acquired their disability, why they're here in the United States, why they live anywhere in the world. We are all equal in, the, in, the, in my eyes. Described by Audio Eyes.
words appear. For more information about Do It, consult washington.edu slash doit. This video presentation was created with funding from the Do It Scholars Program, hosted by Accessible Technology Services at the University of Washington. Copyright 2019, University of Washington. Permission is granted to copy these materials for educational, non-commercial purposes, provided the source is acknowledged. Thank you.